Okay, let's uh, turn our attention to chapter 19. Uh, this is a chapter on what we call cost, volume, profit analysis in managerial accounting, and I believe that you will uh, find this chapter to be uh, somewhat intuitive, not quite as rough as some of the other stuff that we've looked at uh, thus far. So let's get started then. So the first step when we talk about, um, you know, I, I guess really what we need to discuss first is, you know, what is cost volume uh, profit analysis? Um, and so essentially what we're looking at is all of a company's costs um, and the volume in sales that it's going to take for that company to ultimately make a desired profit. Uh, but before we get to a desired profit, um, we really want to make sure first and foremost that we don't lose money. So we have this concept of uh, break even point. All right. And so when we look at uh, establishing a break even point, uh, we've got a basic formula here. And what we say is we've got some numbers as an example that we can use. And we say that, okay, sales are $250,000. And we're going to subtract from that two numbers. We're going to subtract variable expenses and fixed expenses. So we want to also understand what variable and fixed expenses are. Uh, variable expenses are all of our product costs all of the things that we've looked at so forth so say for example if we're talking about a manufacturing company our product costs would be our direct materials our direct labor and our factory overhead and these uh, these variable costs or variable expenses as your slide says these will go up with every uh, unit sold okay so if we uh, manufacture a product for $40. Uh, remember, every time we sell that, we will have a $40 addition to cost of goods sold, um, regardless of what we sell it for, if $40 is our product cost. So these expenses are variable because uh, they vary depending on how much volume we have. We also have to account for fixed expenses, okay? And these are things that are going to be the same no matter what level of production we're at, whether we're at zero, a million, or any number in between. So an example there uh, would be, for example, if we were to rent a factory building, um, that would be a fixed cost. Um, uh, uh, I guess that's not the greatest example. Let's go with um, property taxes these types of things, things that don't change, okay? On the slide that you have in front of you, we have sales of 250000 minus variable expenses of 150000 and that, when we execute that first part of the equation, that gives us a contribution margin, which we haven't discussed yet, of 100000 Now, in this case, fixed expenses are $100,000, so we have net income of zero when you see a simple dash like that uh, preceded by a dollar sign in accounting uh, that is synonymous with zero okay so let's see what we have here when we calculate break-even point and when we conduct break-even analysis we have a couple of different methods that we can use the method that i believe most of you will use is called the equation approach okay and essentially all that means is we're going to use uh, a little bit of algebra and we're going to solve for X to come up with a break-even point uh, in number of units. So we have our formula here, which is the same whether we're using the equation approach or not. But we have sales revenue minus variable expenses minus fixed expenses ultimately lead to profit. So we have a situation here where we're selling some surfboards and our unit sales price is equal to $500. Our unit variable expense is equal to $300.
and we have fixed expenses of $80,000. Solving for X, we can ultimately determine that we will have to sell 400 surfboards uh, to, break, <clears throat> to break even. X equals 400 surfboards. Okay, so if we were to, uh, to if we were to prove this, if we were to multiply $200, that's our unit contribution margin. That's the 500 minus the 300. 200 times 400, um, and then we would subtract. That's going to give us $80,000. If we subtract 80,000 from 80,000, we're going to be left with zero dollars or we are essentially breaking even okay so we're going to spend a couple of slides on what is called the contribution margin approach and this is probably the better approach uh, one of the issues with students using um, basic algebra is that they rely so much on the algebra they forget that there is a business aspect to all this. And so uh, sometimes your answers don't make any sense, quite honestly. Uh, the contribution margin approach, in my view, uh, forces students to think a little bit more about what it is they are looking at. Okay, so looks like what we have here is uh, a situation where we, we've already determined that we have to sell 400 surfboards uh, to break even, but looks like we have a situation here where we're actually selling 500 surfboards. Um, and if we recall, our per unit uh, sales price was 500. If we multiply 500 by 500, we'll get 250. Um, if we multiply 500 by our $300 unit cost each, will come up with 150,000. That gives us a contribution margin of 100,000. Now our fixed expenses here, they don't change. They're still 80,000. So in this particular example, we, have, we would have net income of $20,000. This is the exact same thing that we just looked at, um, but we're more specifically uh, showing break even point. All of these figures here in the middle of the uh, slide are the exact same. Our fixed costs are still eighty thousand dollars. Let's see if we can get that there. Eighty thousand. Um, our unit contribution margin is still two hundred. If we just execute this, we can find out that we have to sell four hundred surfboards to break even. We could do the exact same thing, and we could. Uh, we could determine how many surfboards we, we have to sell to, uh, to make $100,000, to make $200,000, to make $140,000, whatever the case we wanted to plug in there. But for now, we're just looking at break-even uh, analysis in number of units. And then we have a little check your math type slide here. We we say that, okay, we said that you have to sell 400 units to break even. If we do that, we have $200,000 in sales. We do the exact same thing over here with our variable expenses of $300 per unit. And in fact, we do get a contribution margin of 80,000 minus our fixed expenses. Again, these do not change, provides us with net income of $0. All right, now we also have this concept of contribution margin ratio, and what we use this for is, you know, what we looked at in the preceding slides is our break-even point in units. We said that given the data that was provided to us, we would have to sell 400 units, but what that um, doesn't, I mean, we could figure it out, and we had some information, um, but what we also might want to determine is what do we have to do in terms of sales dollars? And this is particularly useful uh, because companies will often uh, use benchmarking uh, techniques and so forth. And there's, um, you know, there's only so much money out there. So when we look at this, we look at the formula and we say, okay, our contribution margin 
over sales equals our contribution margin ratio. Now, our contribution margin, um, I believe, was uh, $80,000. So if we take $80,000 and divide it by, um, let's see, what were our sales? I forget now. I believe they were 200000 we come up with a 40% uh, contribution margin. So our ratio would be 0 0.40. We could prove this by taking our fixed expenses of $80,000, dividing by our contribution margin ratio, and it does in fact give us required sales of $200,000. And there we have the math. Again, this is this is the same thing that we had before, except for they've changed this number here to 400, and the total sales have correspondingly gone down to uh, 200,000. But we can prove the equation right here. All right. We also want to talk a little bit about uh, using graphing techniques. Uh, in cost volume uh, profit analysis. And essentially what you have here um, is you have some what if scenarios <clears throat> based on number of units sold. We have 300, 400, and 500 units. Now we already know that 400 units is our break even point uh, from the previous slides, and it still is $200,000 in sales minus variable, variable expenses minus our fixed expenses equals zero. But we can also uh, look here and we can determine that 300 units will cause a net loss of 20,000 and 500 units will cause a net, will cause net income of $20,000. Okay, well that's great, but we can also plot this information on a graph. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we, we have over here, we have some, some dollars. And these dollars are going to represent um, this vertical uh, axis here is going to represent dollars for both our expenses and for our sales revenue. And then we have our units plotted here. Now notice the first thing we're going to look at is our fixed expenses. And our fixed expenses are not starting off here. What we have determined at some point in time in this particular example is that our fixed expenses for this company look to be about 115,000, something like that, 112,000. Um, they're right here. So we're going to plot this horizontal line across. And what we're trying to show here is, show here is that our fixed expenses are the same at uh, zero units. They're the same at roughly 750 units. They do not change. So we we just take a straight line for whatever amount our fixed expenses are, and we just plot it horizontally just like this. All right. So if that is true, it also holds true that this, when we when we want to talk about our total expenses, well, what are we adding to that? If If this black line here represents our fixed expenses, this diagonal line that goes up with volume represents the addition of variable expenses. Okay, so if we want to look at total expenses, we must start not at zero, but at total fixed expenses. All right, looks like we added something with uh, $250,000 that may be sales revenue. I'm not sure. Let's take a look here. Okay, so now I said before that we could plot um, both sales and expenses over here on this vertical axis, and we can. We're going to, this doesn't look like it, but we're actually starting sales at, at um, essentially zero dollars, and then we're moving up, okay? We're moving up, and at some point, these 
lines for total expenses and total sales are going to intersect. Okay, and this provides us with uh, three important pieces of information. So what we have here is our break-even point is right here at the intersection. Anything in this area right here above and to the right of the break-even point is profit, and anything going down and to the left is going to be our loss area. So you may find that this uh, cost volume profit graph uh, is helpful to you, and if so, I do encourage you to use it.